Hi everyone, Zach here. In this video, I show you how to set up a very simple autofocus effect for Eevee in Blender 2.8. So if you just wanna look at your sculptings with even more awesomeness, or if you just wanna test out some camera movements and don't wanna change the depth of field manually, this can be quite useful. So enjoy. All right, I'm using Blender 2.8 Alpha. If you want to download the latest build, check the link in the video description. Okay, before we start, one thing though, this method is limited to one object only. That means if you have like a car or whatever, which consists out of multiple objects, you basically have to join them. If you find a way how to use this method here on multiple objects, Please let me know in the comment section below. This is a scene I'm using here, three area lamps, one simple ground plane and this dragon sculpting which I did in Blender 2.79, not in Blender 2.8. So to view all this nice Eevee stuff, we have to switch to the Eevee render engine over here under the render tab and up here we have to go to the rendered viewport shading. So and this is what it looks like. But now let's quickly switch back to the solid viewport shading, disable this collection with all the stuff in here and let's add a camera. If your 3D cursor is not in the center, hit Shift S, cursor to center and then Shift A, camera. With Alt R I reset the rotation and then I press R, X, 90 degrees and then with Shift A I add an empty arrows. And with this arrows, we see the local axis directly on the empty object. So now let's parent the empty to the camera, select the empty, then with shift the camera, control P, set parent to object. That means if I now move the camera, the empty is moving along with the camera. So now let's enable the collection up here again. Let's select the camera, press G, move it over here a bit. And now let's select the empty and we can see that the positive y direction is pointing to the dragon. So let's go to the constraints, add a shrink web constraint. As target we choose the dragon. This is the one big limitation of this technique I'm showing you here. It's only limited to one object. So if you want to have multiple objects you have to join them. So now you can see with the shrink web constraint this empty object will be projected on the surface, but now on a very strange place. And so we have to change the shrink web type to project. And as I mentioned, this one is the positive Y direction. So we have to change the axis to plus Y. And now as you can see, if I move the camera, the empty will be always projected on the dragon as long as we are looking on the dragon. So and now we just have to switch the focus to this empty object. We can do this by selecting the camera, go to the camera settings, depth of field, focus on object and here we choose the empty object. And now the camera will always focus on this point where the empty is. And this is basically the main trick. Now we can go to the camera view with numpad zero, enable all the nice viewport shading effects. But right now we don't have any depth of field because this we have to enable in the render settings. Let's go to the render settings, enable depth of field and let's also enable bloom for this nice glowing effects. Let's also enable screen space reflection for some nice reflection effects. And I guess that's enough. Now let's switch back to the camera settings and turn down the f-stop value. And the lower the value is, the stronger the depth of field is. Let's use 0 0.3 here to have a very strong effect. And now we can move the camera around and the focus will always be in the center of our camera view. So let's go to view, navigation, walk navigation. And now we can move around here with WASD, like in the video game. And as you can see, it will always focus where we are looking on the dragon here. So in order to make this look even nicer, we can do some more stuff. First of all, we can disable all the overlay stuff. So we only see the stuff which is rendered. As you can see, if I move outside the camera, nothing shows up here. But the problem is outside the camera, I don't have this nice depth of field effect. 
only inside the camera, but we can lock the camera to our view so that we can use our standard navigation for the viewport and the camera is always attached to our view basically. And to do so we press N for the properties panel, view, lock camera to view. So that means if I now use my standard navigation tools, I can also, for example, select the dragon here and move around. You can see it will always focus the depth of field where we are looking at. In this way you can, for example, test some camera animations to see how this looks like if we are moving along here. Unfortunately, the walk navigation has no shortcut yet as far as I know, but we can add this to the quick favorites. So we go to view navigation and right click on walk navigation and add to quick favorites. And now I just have to press Q and here I can select this and the walk navigation is enabled. And now look at this, we can fly around and make this even cooler. If you're looking away from the dragon, then you just have this strong blur. But as long as you're looking on parts of the dragon, this looks really nice. So and to make this even more awesome, we can go to window, toggle window full screen. That means it will remove the windows border from windows, the, this stuff up here. And then we can go to view, area, toggle full screen area. Now we are in the full full screen mode and now we can take a look at the dragon here with this nice depth of field effect. So in order to get out of this full screen mode, you can move your mouse to the top right corner and click on this symbol. So what we also can do, let's select the camera, go to the camera settings under lens and let's change the focal length to 25 or to 15. For example, then we have this wide angle view. And if we're now in this full screen mode, this looks even nicer. Of course, we can see even more of the dragon. Ooh. It's cool to just test some camera animations uh, to see what you will do in your final animation. So there's one little thing you can do which makes this even more awesome, but this is now only working in Blender 2.79. The option is also available in Blender 2.8, but it just doesn't seem to do anything. So anyway, I'm pretty sure it will be fixed in Blender 2.8 soon. Blender 2.8 is still in alpha, we should keep this in mind. So basically here I have the same setup. I have the camera, I have one empty. And what we do here, I add another empty. Let's add a circle, make this a bit smaller. And now I parent the small circle to this empty and the empty to the camera. Then on this empty, basically the same thing with the shrink wrap constraint. Let's choose the dragon as target. Let's set the shrink web type to project, axis to positive Y. So this is basically all the same. Now let's select this one here, which is basically the parent of the empty. That means it will always move along with this empty object. But if I select this, we can go to the object settings, relations extra and enable slow parent. Let's set the offset to 10, for example. And now this means if the empty is moving, the other empty is following pretty slow. The higher you set this offset value, the slower it will be. And now in the camera settings, under depth of field, let's choose this object here, which is empty 001 as target. So that means the camera is moving and the second empty is following slow. So that means we won't have this very harsh transition if the position of the empty is changing. So the change of the depth of field is pretty smooth, which is pretty cool. And yeah, we can also enable viewport depth of field in Blender 2.79, press N. Under shading, we have to enable depth of field. It's only working in the camera perspective. And in the camera settings under viewport, we have this f-stop value, which we can turn down. It's not as beautiful as in Blender 
but it will work to show you how this looks like. So if I now enable only render, we can only see what's going on here. So if I now move the camera over here, you can see it's not moving this fast anymore. So and if you want to have this even slower, then just select the second empty and increase the offset under slow parent. And then we have this slow changing offset. And yeah, if you play the animation, the slow parent will work better. Otherwise it will only move while you're moving the main camera here. So this is just one little simple trick, which would also make this in Blender 2.8 even cooler when the slow parent is working again. This just as addition if you're using Blender 2.79 or if you're working with Blender 2.8 in the future and maybe this is working then. Yeah guys, this easy you can set up this kind of autofocus effect in Blender 2.8 slash 2.7. If you like this shorter video format, let me know in the comments below and maybe I can do more of those videos in the future. And if you like what you see, hit the like button, share this video and subscribe to this channel, ring the bell. And if you like to learn more about sculpting, check out my mastering sculpting course. And if you love my videos, you can support this channel on Patreon. All the links you find down below in the video description. Thanks a lot for watching guys, see you in the next video, goodbye.